Today we're going to be taking a look at Sage ERPX3 Manufacturing Project Management. Many people didn't even know that this module existed, and there was a couple of reasons for it. When Sage ERPX3 was really introduced to the North American market about, oh, three years ago, it was put on the price list as Manufacturing Project Management, and many people didn't know what it was, didn't know what it did, that type scenario. But actually, this particular module in a previous life was named ETO, or Engineer to Order. Now, in all honesty, that was a poor disservice to the module because that's not what it did. It wasn't set for Engineer to Order environments. It was really set for manufacturing project type environments. So when people looked at it and saw ETO, the perception was, well, this doesn't really do what ETO needs us to do. So many people wrote the module off, didn't look at it, et cetera. Well, in the past year, several opportunities have come up in my pre-sales activities where manufacturing project management was an issue, and I sort of blew the dust off the covers of this module and got to look at it and discovered it's actually a very powerful module for actually doing project-based manufacturing. So what we'll do today is we'll actually take a look at a couple of PowerPoint slides, give you an introduction to manufacturing project management, then we'll actually get into the product that you see it. And what you'll see, there's a lot of flexibility in how you set the product up, which actually creates a lot of questions of how you might use it, et cetera. But we'll be happy to answer those as we go through the process. But as far as the introduction is, really what this module aims to do, as you can see, is fit the needs of an industrial company that design and manufacture projects, products in a project mode might be a big packaging machine, might be a big piece of capital equipment. In some cases, it may be designed from scratch, et cetera. But actually, the production of this particular piece of equipment is done under some type of project-type environment. And if you actually take a look at it, the targets that this market is, uh, module is aimed at is manufacturers of customized equipment using standard parts and manufacturers of a specific equipment. Now, what you might see in that is when we say customized equipment, I might have a standard machine that I can build multiple different ways using different types of standard parts. In some cases, that might even be a configured uh, machine that we can work with. And one of the things that NPM, if you hear me use the term NPM, that's just their acronym or abbreviation for Manufacturing Project Management. NPM can actually use a configurator within, say, GRPX3. Now, manufacturer-specific equipment might be designed from scratch. They have specifications that they actually have to do, and they actually design the equipment from scratch. Actually, I was working on a prospect with South Georgia recently, and they manufacture these big pumping stations. And all they get from our customers is, I need a pumping station that does this. Design it for me. And in some cases, they'll buy standard parts. They'll design the parts, all kind of combinations for it. That's the target of who this module is actually aimed for. The objectives, you can see there is to organize the project from quotation to production, to control and monitor variances from the original budget, and also to identify excesses and anticipate the outcomes of projects. Because one of the things that often happens is we start off with a very good estimate of a project, but once we get into it, the costs start drifting. We have cost overruns. We have budget shortfalls. And before you know it, we thought it was going to cost us $200,000 to build this thing, and it actually cost us $350,000 to do it. So. One of the key things about NPM is the ability to track projects as they go along and see where you're actually performing against your budget estimates and that type scenario. So if you actually take a look at typical project phases, and I'm saying typical because they could actually be multiple different ways of doing this, but a typical project might go through an estimation phase, and then that estimation phase we'll do some type of calculation of cost. We might do a calculation of time using scheduling. And we might also establish some budgets for how we're going to do it. Now, the next phase that a prospect might go through is they might do a quotation phase where they actually prepare quotes, technical documents, and actually respond to customer specifications. And there's actually some unique things you can do with NPM as far as addressing customer specifications. And those specifications could be external to the customer or they could be internal for your own use. But you have a lot of flexibility in how you actually set up those specifications. You also have a lot of flexibility in how you set up the quotation, the technical documents, and those type scenarios. The next phase that you might go through is what we refer to as a commitment phase. 
And when we talk about a commitment phase, we're talking about tracking order progress. That could be tracking the progress of purchase orders where we're buying um, materials, tracking the progress of sales orders where we're actually uh, going through the sales process, work orders, any type of commitment when we start spending money or setting up a contract relationship with the customer, that would come under the commitment phase. Now, next thing we might do is do a procurement phase, and on that procurement phase, we're actually going out and purchasing materials, fabricating parts and assemblies, and in some cases, those could be with or without bills of materials. The bills of materials could be very simple or very detailed. You could have multiple bills of materials within it. But as far as that procurement, it's really two things. It's the purchase of materials, and it's actually the fabrication of the parts and assemblies into the finished product. The next phase is an execution phase, where now we're going to start doing purchase activities, manufacturing activities, and reporting time against those uh, manufacturing and purchasing activities, and also different types of uh, design type activities. As far as reporting of those times, it can be done a number of different ways within X3. It could be done specific to a project line. It could be done as part of a work order. All kinds of ways of actually doing time or tracking within the project within, uh, say, GRP X3. The last phase is an accounting phase. We're actually we're trying to keep up with project revenue, project costs, and project variances. This does make use of the dimensional accounting attributes within, say, DRP X3 because everything that occurs to that project gets tracked back to a project number and can get tracked back to a line on the project itself. So if you take a look at these big high-level project phases, estimation, quotation, commitment, procurement, execution, and accounting, this is just a sample. It could be something different. You can actually vary it by your particular organization that you're working with with uh, manufacturing project management. Now, the next part of this is if you actually take a look at a project, a project is the center of everything within NPM. And when we say the project, that is the standard project functionality that you find within, say, GRPX3, but has been enhanced with some additional features that make it specific to managing a manufacturing type project. And associated with those projects, there could be quotes, there could be sales, there could be purchases, there could be production, there could be an interface to a PDM product. We could be pulling inventory from stock, we could actually be buying it to order, all kind of combinations, and then finally financial analysis. And because in some cases, these are rather large machines that we might have to do some service after the sale, you can actually associate service requests to the project. And the key thing with the project being the center of all this, all these activities, quote, sales, purchase, production, et cetera, you all get updated to the project and you have a global view of how much your budget is, how much you spent, and that type scenario associated with the project. Now, if you actually take a look at a project, a project can go through multiple phases. It can go through a, a budgeted phase, where you actually budget the project, a committed phase, and a committed, by definition, with NPM is you create a purchase order, you create a work order, you create some type of activity that has a financial implication in which you are committing dollars to the project. Finally, you'll get an executed phase, that executed could be reporting of time, could be reporting of uh, purchase receipts, could be reporting of purchase invoices, but you're actually executing activities that were previously committed. And what you'll also see in X3, when you actually take a look at a project line, it will go from a committed state to a carried out state, and a carried out state is actually an executed state. Then you also do multiple types of analysis. It does have a very nice uh, project management report where it actually shows you the project details and all the cost to date, cost left to spend, things such as that. And then finally, the last part of the project is an invoice uh, phase. As far as the project, the thing that you bill, when we talk about invoicing, that could be just invoicing the project. It could be actually shipping a finished piece of equipment. It really depends how you actually set it up within NPM. Now, if you actually take a little step forward with it, let's talk a little bit about project definition. When you create a project within NPM, 
A project can have multiple detail lines, and that it could be five lines, it could be ten lines, it could be a hundred lines, it could be five hundred lines. And those lines can be multiple different things. A project line could be a stage in the project that you want to track, a budget line that you want to track, maybe an item you purchase, maybe an item you manufacture. And if you manufacture, it may or may not have a bill of material. It may or may not have a product routing. It really depends how you set it up. It could be an item that you want to sell. When you actually create a project, you could actually uh, sell all the items associated with the project, or you could actually sell one line for the finished product itself. And I'll actually show you two examples of that when we actually get into the product itself. It could be just an item you want to invoice. It might be a um, progress billing. So there could be a detail line within the project where you actually do a progress billing, where you might build 20% of the project, you might build cost to date. It's really how you want to actually set up how that billing takes place. So when we talk about invoicing, it could be invoicing all the separate components of the product project. It could be a single invoice for the project itself. It could be progress buildings for various stages of the project. It's really your choice how you do it. And a project line can be tracked based on three different things, a budget, a commitment, and achievement, which is also referred to as carried out. Now, as you once you have the product defined, you get into what we call project schedule, schedule status and evaluation. And one of the key things that you can do as far as the schedule is you can actually display the project timelines in Gantt chart format, showing start dates, end dates, and durations. You can also drill down to the associated project events, the quotes, the sales orders, the purchase orders, the work orders. And while it's not showing on this particular graphic, if you had service requests associated with the project, you could drill down to the service requests associated with the project. You can track and monitor the project status. You can look at you know, what steps you're at, what purchases have been completed, what manufacturing has been completed, any types of warnings. There's actually a project position screen where various warning lights are color-coded to actually determine what the status of the particular project step is, et cetera. And then finally, you can evaluate project budgets and positions. You can also set up a project-subproject relationship so you can actually look at the details of a sub-project and actually have it rolled up to a master project. So you might take a very extensive uh, project and rather than have a 500 line one project definition, you might have a master project and then you might have a separate project for the design phase, the procurement phase, the fabrication phase, the service phase, et cetera, and the cost of all those can roll up to the master project. So a lot of ways you can actually set things up associated with the project within NPM, within, say, GRPX3. One of the screens that we'll see later in the day is this is a, a screen where it actually shows different statuses associated with steps of the project. It's actually called the um, position screen or the position tab. And you can actually see across the top you got different colors, blue LEDs, green, yellow, orange, red, and different documents down the left-hand side, purchase order, purchase receipt, purchase invoice, et cetera. So, for example, if we actually saw a purchase order line within the project and the receipt was past date, there should be a red button beside that particular line. And you can see the others down the bottom, there was actually a bill of material to find in the project that actually shows you the stock situation as far as that particular component within the uh, bill of material structure within the project. So all kind of things and ways that you can look at it. So let's just go over right now. We'll just drop out of the PowerPoint. We'll actually go over to, say, GRPX3, and we'll actually take a look at a manufacturing project management within, say, GRPX3. Now, if you actually take a look at this visual process, it sort of shows you the life of a project as far as the phases that it could go through. This is not to say that it might be different in a different environment, but these are ones that we actually set up in the demo system. So in essence, a project goes through an estimation phase, a commitment phase, an execution phase, and an analysis phase. If you actually take a look at the tasks that take place within the various projects, there's selling tasks, there's planning tasks, there's purchasing or buying tasks, and there's make tasks. And there could actually even be um, service tasks or after-the-sales tasks that could also be associated with the project. 
So if you actually took a look at the project, if you took a look at the cell phases, really, as far as the cell phases of a project, you go through a quoting phase, a sales order phase, a shipment phase, and then actually the sales invoices. So if you think about it, a quote is just passing along an estimate to the customer about what you're going to charge them for the project. The commitment phase is where they actually create a sales order saying, yes, I will buy this project, which gives you the authority to carry out the project and get over into the execution phase. As far as the execution phase, that's the actual shipment of the project. That could be a uh, shipment of an item or multiple items right out of stock, or it could be a non-stock item when you just basically do a shipment transaction to tell the system that you did, in fact, finish and complete the project and make the thing capable to be invoiced. If you go into the planning side, there's actually a couple of things you can do there. Planning can be done using traditional MRP or reorder point planning. Once again, that's defined at the item level. So you may have some cases that you actually buy stuff specific to a project, and you may actually have some stock stuff that you stock within a reorder point type situation. Maybe you have different pipes, different wiring, different flanges, things such as that. But also associated with the estimating phase, you're actually keeping track of some time associated with how much design time did it actually do associated with that particular uh, project. When we get into the buying phase, we really start talking about going from commitment to execution. So in this particular case, the commitment might start working with our purchase workbench. It might could take purchase uh, suggestions, convert into purchase orders, then receipts, then invoices. It's also an example of, well, when we go and create a purchase order associated with a project line, we have actually done a commitment phase of the project. In other words, we've committed dollars, we've committed to the supplier that we're going to buy something, so we've committed dollars to the project. By the same token, too, when we receive the product and then process the purchase invoice, we have actually carried out that particular line of the project and actually falls on the execution phase. Then finally, on the make side, we may actually do very similar like we do in manufacturing. We have a manufacturing workbench. We get su suggestions of things that we need to make. Now, that would only occur if we were actually making a product that had a bill of material structure. The first simple project I'm going to show you is really just we're going to buy some parts, put them together, and we're going to sell them to this person for a particular one, and then we'll take a look at some other examples that we have a look at. Once you um, have work orders, then you go through production and time tracking. could be standard production tracking of work orders within, say, GRP X3, or it could be just reporting a fabrication time that was actually set up. The last phase of the project is the analysis phase, where we actually can print out a project overview report. Because we are using the dimensional capabilities of, say, GRP X3, we can actually go take a look at our dimension balance. to see all the financial transactions associated with the project, and also we can do the other different types of inquiries, stock by site, stock by product, the traditional ones that we take a look at. So what we'll do now is we'll actually go take a look at a project within say GRPX3. So I'm actually going to bring it up. When I bring this up, you'll actually see a few things that are a little different than what you've seen in the past on the project associated with uh, the uh, uh, standard say GRPX3, and that you'll see some multiple tabs across here. But when you actually set up the project, here's sort of some specific uh, information about the project, you know, sales rep, category, customer, number of quotes, project end dates, those type things, header type information associated with the project. I could go to my position tab, and what this actually does is it shows me sort of the traffic lights of all the things that's going on with this particular product, project. You can actually see here's some green lights, some red lights, and things such as that. And if you actually take a look at back at this particular chart that we looked at a moment ago, this is where you could actually see what those particular ones are. And trust me, I have not learned them all or memorized them all myself. Then you get into the planning phase, where this is actually a Gantt chart representation of the project. These are all the lines of a project, and we'll actually go create a project here in a few moments where we see different things. But what you can actually see, if I was to actually come up and take a look at line number one, you can actually see two different things. You can see the cost associated with this line. So in this particular case, it was a budget of $2,400. We've actually carried out $1,760. And if you actually take a look at these two columns, these are actually showing us 
overall perspective of the project. So we can see in this particular case, the project revenue was 101000 we were trying to do a budget of $62,000. We actually committed $75,000, so we carried out 82. So in essence, we actually overspent on this project $20,000. You can actually set up before sales steps, after sales steps. You can set up different types of overview where you can actually group multiple projects into a master project. We'll take a look at that later. Different signers associated with the project. Uh, what their ID is, is it mandatory where they sell or not sell, and then the actual signature date, different documents associated with the, the um, project, type of document, is it mandatory, when do we receive the document. Specifications, this actually is specification specific to this project, where in this particular case we might say the feed of the thing, the feed accuracy, the feeding angle. All these specifications are user defined within a table a local menu table within say GRPX3 and you'll note that these could be internal specifications things that we're measuring and then finally customer specific specifications and then if we go over to the last thing here's our analytical dimension where it actually comes back and takes a look at it so let's so and actually create a project now when you can actually create a project a couple ways you can do it if I just bring up a project if I wanted to take this project and copy it or duplicate it, I could hit this duplication button and if there was you know, one task or 15 tasks or 100 tasks, it would actually take all those tasks and duplicate them for me. I can also set up different project templates. In this case, here's a template model and I could actually take this template model and duplicate it and create another project from it. But we're going to actually create one from scratch. It's actually going to be a very simple project, and I'm going to sort of walk you through it. And as we go through the process, we'll actually see what happens as far as different statuses taking place in that type scenario. So I'm just going to go back to my uh, project tab here. And I'm just going to tell it a new project. So the sequence number, that will be the project number. I want user defined, formula height does it. The mid description, we'll just say this is a sample project. Put in whatever you'd like to do. Who am I actually doing this project for? I'm doing for a customer C2201. Notice it actually brought in the currency. Uh, that type scenario, I bring in my primary contact, some other identifiers, that type scenario. Who's the sales rep responsible for this project? The category, once again, user defined and say, well, we'll just say this project is going to be less than $500,000. The opening date is today. Conclusion date is actually a date we fill in later on. Now, you can also do subcategories of projects. Once again, user defined on the table. I don't have any. But the key date we have to put in here is what's the required end date of this particular project. So we'll say we've got to have this project done on 06, 15, 14. And if you actually come down, now this financial elements, these are actually part of the standard um, project functionality with NX3. You do not have to fill it out, but you might actually want to fill this out for actually doing uh, backlog analysis, things such as that. So let's just say we're going to estimate it, that the project revenue for this project is $150,000. Give it some margin. We'll say it's a 90% chance this project will happen. And then it's about a 95% chance that we'll get it. Of course, that's giving us our weighted number down here of 128,250. So I'm going to create this project. You'll notice they asked if I wanted to create the analytical dimension. Of course, I'll say yes. So now I've got this project. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to start adding lines to the project. And one of the first things I do is I click in this grouping code. And this is a drop down where you can actually take project lines and group them together into design tasks, purchase tasks, production tasks, deliver tasks, install, etc. Call them what you want to call them. They're a local menu option. If you don't like these particular names, you can call them whatever you'd like to do. But we're just going to come up and do a design. And actually, what's the product to do this design? Well, it's actually a thing called a product called DES MECH. So it's design mechanical. And I'm estimating for building my project budget that I'm going to take 30 hours of mechanical design, spring in my cost of $2,400 of labor. And if I go across here and keep going and says we're going to sell that labor for $3,600, there's my margin. And we're going to start this task on 4:22 and finish it on 4:27:14. So now if I actually come back over here, I can put another line on the project. So we'll also, I could add more design steps, but for 
uh, time purposes, I'm going to say, well, well, we're going to purchase some materials to make this project. So we're going to come up and buy us a pump. I don't know what the pump number is. Oh, it's a small pump, so I'm going to get a small pump. Let's just say we're going to use three small pumps. And in this particular case, notice it's bringing in the material cost is $9,000. And it goes out and says, well, we're going to sell those pumps for 15000 But no, I want to be greedy. I'm going to sell these pumps for $20,000 each. Change my margin. Copy in this particular case. We'll say that we'll start buying those pumps on 04-27-14. And they should be here by 05-15-14. And go from there. So now I'm going to come back and put me one or two more items on it. So I'm just going to also purchase this thing. So we're going to purchase a separate another pump, a PU-102. It's going to be a medium pump. It's going to be one of those. And we'll say 1200 and sales amount. Well, we're going to sell this for, uh, I don't know, $22,000. Now, it could have actually brought in standard prices that I'd set up within, uh, say, GRPX3. It's your option whether it actually does it. It can also go out and look at the price tables and do that. But we'll say 04, 04, 27, 14, and then 05, 15, 14. And then we're going to put one more line on this particular project. And we're actually going to come up, and this is going to be a, fabric, a production line. And we're going to actually put two things on it. We're going to actually go out and say there's some fab mechanical labor. In this particular case, we'll say it's going to take uh, 50 hours of mechanical labor to do all this stuff and go through here. And we'll just tab two and take those. So we'll just say 04. Um, 2714, and we'll say 051514. Go from there. So, and I could also go back and actually come up and and add some more steps to it. But this is a very simple project, just to give you a flavor for it. But what you can actually see now is that as we were doing that, it created a project budget of $24,900. It's actually 1,500 budget for this line item. So here's my revenue of 47,850. My margin is 22,950, so I got roughly 48% margin. But one of the things I want to do now before I do anything is I want to go up and I want to create a snapshot of this particular project so I can keep track of changes as I go through, et cetera. So now I've got that particular project set up. And what I'm actually going to do now is we'll go out and we'll create a quote associated with this project. So I'm going to go out here and create a quote. Just a standard quote function I have been say GRPX3. Here's my quote. Now, actually, if you go over to the lines here, you'll notice that, okay, we're actually quoting him all the components of the project. Design mechanical, pump one, pump two, and then some uh, mechanical time to do it. So in this particular case, we've got our line totals and that stuff out there. So we're going to create this particular quote and with these four lines on it. You might say, well, how did it know to put those four lines on it? If we actually go back to the project, you notice this check mark. What this check mark tells the NPM is whether to actually put this as a sales line on a quote or a sales order, et cetera. Now, once I get this project done, I'll go back and show you how I could have eliminated all that and just gave, gave them one line to build them for the total cost of the project. But in this particular case, we've got the quote out there. Now, we can also in doc invoice you know, introduce all the standard workflow capabilities within X3, quote approvals, that type scenario, some net sales approvals, all kind of things associated with that. We could have actually come up here and actually gone up and created some appointments, telephone calls, and tasks associated with it. If we were making telephone calls and tasks and that stuff, we could have saved them. So we could actually track all the communication associated with this particular project by using the standard CRM communication capabilities within uh, say GRPX3. Now what we'll actually do now is we actually went back and took a look at this planning tab and actually saw it. And I can actually see here's a Gantt chart for this particular one. It's not too terribly exciting because there's not much in it, but imagine you had a big multi-line project that would actually give you that Grant Gantt representation. If we go over to our position and tell it to refresh the screen, now you can actually see all the project lines grouped according to the reporting group. So you can see, for example, if I go to this purchase line, that we're actually going to purchase a pump one and two. If we go to the design line, we've got this. And of course, if I actually did the production line, you'd see that. You'll also see this particular case. Now we've associated the quote with that particular project. You can also see in this particular case, it's a red blinking thing. 
in that particular case, that actually means that this quote has not been converted to a sales order. So let's just go out as we would expect to do. If we go back here, let's just go out and convert that quote to a sales order. So if I come up to my favorites bar and go out to working with projects, go to sales orders, I'm just going to create myself a standard order. I'm going to come out here and tell it new, and I'm just going to go over here and select me a quote. In this particular case, here's a quote. Note all those line items got carried over to the quote. Once we go and change the delivery date to reflect when we're really going to deliver it, which we'll say was uh, 053014, and we do want to affect the lines. Now, also associated with this, too, if we create it, now you'll actually see a couple of things as we go through this process. If we get our lines, here's all the lines. And as you see in this particular case, that we don't have any small pumps or medium pumps because those we don't stock them around. We only buy them when we need them for a project. You can also see that we come back over here. Now you can actually see the cross-reference of the sales order to the project and go from there. Now, let's just end out of this, go back to our project, go back to our lines, and actually refresh this screen. And what that does is actually goes and scans the database for transactions that's taking place associated with it. So now if we actually went back to our process chart, what we've sort of done, we've sort of gone from the estimation phase to the commitment phase, and we're starting to get over into the execution phase. Now, for example, I could, if I wanted to, do a couple of things. Now, I could go ahead and run MRP. We'll run that very quickly. And I could also go up here and actually track some time associated with my design phase. So if I go to my design phase, and I tell them I'm doing NPM project time tracking and hit OK. I can actually tap through here. I could actually put in an employee ID, but I'm just going to go down here and say, OK, on this particular date, it was a miscellaneous. Who was the employee? And my transaction, I've got it set up as optional, but we'll go ahead and put something in. So it was employee 1002. And what we're actually doing, while well, we actually did this in design mechanical, and what project was it? When we actually come up here and select the project, notice when I selected the project, it then asked, well, which line of the project are you doing this for? So this would be design mechanical. Well, how many hours did you devote doing it? Well, let's just say I did uh, 27 hours, and I could change my time units, et cetera, if I validate this. So now, if we actually ended out of this and went back to the project and actually went to our lines and had it refreshed, what you would actually see when we come to this line, you'll actually see that we had a budget of 2400 and we've carried out $2,160 worth of time, which is what we just actually reported against um, the project when we did that. Now, we could also come up here if we wanted to. You notice I ran the MRP. I could actually come up to my purchase workbench and do a search and see things that I need to buy. And if I actually scroll to the right, if it was a, a line-specific uh, project, it would actually show that for me. In this particular case, I thought I ran MRP. Maybe I didn't hit the thing as I should have. But anyway, let's just go actually associate a purchase order with a project. So I'm actually going to come up to this purchase order and create that. So we're going to create a new purchase order. And we're actually going to go to supplier S2311. That's our pump supplier, and if we go to our lines, in this particular case, we had we had a small pump. It was a PU, I don't know, PU101, and I think there was uh, two of those that we actually wanted to buy, so we'll say two of those. And then if we actually come back in this particular case, we'll get a PU102. Oops, I will if I actually type right. So we'll say a PU102, and there was end out of this. And so now there was one of those, and this particular case will actually come up. Now, a couple of things we're going to do. Let's just scroll to the right, and the gross price was $3,000 for these pumps, but our buyer didn't do such a great job. He actually had to pay $3,500 a pump for this one, and he had to pay uh, $13,500 for this particular pump. So now if I take a look at that, and I create it. Now, the other thing I might want to do is actually come back and associate these with lines on the projects. Oh, excuse me, I hit the wrong thing. So if we actually come back to our form mode and go to our project, so if we actually come down this particular case and do a selection, we'll select that project that we just did. And which one are we buying? Well, we're buying the small pumps here. Uh, we'll say no. 
because we've actually got those already. And then we'll do the same thing on this one. We'll come up and we'll associate that particular project line, uh, purchase order line with the project. So in this case, it's one against our sample project. It was the second pump. Uh, we'll say no. We'll hit OK. We'll save it. So now we've got that. So now if we actually end out of this and go back and take a look at some of our project information, and if we actually come back to our lines and actually have it scanned for transactions, what we'll actually see now, notice in this particular case that we've got committed and that type of stuff carried out. So in this particular case, if we actually went and took a line, look at this purchase, and a couple of things you can do here is you can actually come up in this particular case. So here's my budget, here's my committed. So in this particular case, here's where we are. I can also hit the right mouse button and go to my line detail and see more details about this particular line, the items purchased, the percent achieved, the budget, analytical dimensions, things such as that. So you've got a lot more detail than what you have associated with this. So now we see in this particular case that if we scan that and we go over to our position and we update that, what we'll actually see if we come take a product purchase here, we'll actually see here's the purchase orders associated with those particular lines and go from there. So now you can start actually seeing the history of this particular project being developed where we've actually got the different phases, the things we're buying for, the customer records as far as the quote, the sales orders. Maybe it's about time for us to make another snapshot for us. So we'll come up here and we'll do us another snapshot. So we'll save that snapshot. And now what we'll do is we'll actually, we'll actually get over some of the uh, execution side of things. Uh, notice I didn't go back and actually uh, create um, any work orders, but I have the ability, if you actually remember, if we go back and take a look at that project, on the line level, there was actually some places where we actually said in our budget that we were going to estimate 50 hours for them to take these pumps and other various parts that I didn't specify on the project and put them together. So now we might need to actually go out and specify some activities associated with this particular project. So now if I actually come back and do some time tracking, same type thing again, project time tracking, this particular case, I'm going to come down here and, and key the date and miscellaneous. And let's be a different employee. It's employee 1008. And he worked in design, oops, not design, in fab mechanical. And what project was it? Well, it was the sample project we're working on. It was fabrication mechanical. He did 25 hours. And maybe one of his cohorts, uh, guy number 1009, and this is pulling from the same employee table that um, our shop floor control pulls from. So in this particular case, we'll kick the project again and pick the line associated with it. And this guy worked, uh, I don't know, we'll say he worked 35 hours. Now, if I actually validate this, what is it actually going to do now? It's going to go back and it's actually going to report time against that project. So now if I actually go back to my execution side of things, uh, we'll actually come up and take a look at that. We'll come to our lines, we'll refresh them, and what we'll actually see now is all kind of things are taking force. We've been carrying out uh, uh, some things, some committed things, et cetera, but what's the one thing we haven't done? Well, we haven't received our pumps and we haven't paid for our pumps. So let's just go back real quick and take a look at that purchase order that we created for those two pumps. The supplier 211 is purchase order 185, and the total for that purchase order was $20,500. So what we'll actually do is we'll come back and we'll actually do a receipt of that associated with it. So we'll actually come create a new receipt. Also, same standard uh, barcoding uh, technology applies to NPMs. It does in standard, say, GRPX3. So we'll come select this guy. We'll get our two pumps. We'll create those. Now, obviously, we're getting some match warnings because they came in earlier. And now the next thing that we'll actually do is we'll go back and actually process the invoice for that particular uh, in, uh, purchase order. And if you remember right, that particular purchase order had a value of uh, 20500 So we'll actually come create our purchase order. Now what's really was taking place now is if we go back to our chart, we're actually transitioning from committed dollars to carried out or executed dollars. And on the purchasing side, that takes place when you actually process the receipt and process the purchase invoice. So in this particular case, we'll take a full invoice. 
We'll tell it a new invoice record, and we'll say it's a standard invoice, and we'll say the supplier is S2311, and we'll go over to our re receipt, and we'll pick that receipt that we just did, receiver 186. So it actually brought that particular information in. We'll go back in. We'll put in our uh, document number, and we'll actually come down and say, well, it was $20,500, and we'll uh, create that. And, of course, it says, that's in this particular case, we got some match warnings, but really it's because it's too earlier. So now what we'll actually do is we'll actually go out and we'll post some activity against that particular thing. So what happens is now we've actually totally carried out the receipt of those purchase goods. If we come back to our project and go into the execution size, what we'll actually see when we take a look at it, when we do this, we notice now that now we've actually gone from a budget of 24,900, a committed of 20,500, and a carried out of 24,460. So in this particular case, we're actually looking at line number one, 2400, 2160. But if we go down to this one, we'll actually see that uh, there was $7,000 that were carried out for the, the small pumps, and then there was uh, 13,500 carried out for those. And if we go back to our position and refresh that, we'll just see more information about this. Notice when we come down in here that, you know, our lights have changed because now we've got things received against the project. But you'll also notice down up here in this particular case that uh, where you've actually got some percentages showing you some overruns, some underruns, et cetera. So in this particular case, if you actually take a look at the design phase, we actually had um, – a budget of $2,400, we're actually at 90% of that budget. If we drill down to the actual PO lines, you can actually see the one coming from Poe Manufacturing. We were 120% of our budget, and others go from there. So let's just go up here and take ourselves another snapshot and see how we're doing. So now we've got that snapshot. So now if we actually come back, and you can take these snapshots at any point in the process. So now if we have this particular snapshot and take a look at the snapshot view, this actually shows us the history of the project, and you can actually see the dollars being transferred from budget to committed to carried out. So now that second snapshot, we still we had some stuff committed, but we had very little carried out. And in this particular case, we've actually gone from budget to committed and that stuff. And of course, you can obviously come up here and make it a, a line graph and make it much easier to read. So you can actually see the transition from budget to committed to carried out as part of the project. So you can take as many of these snapshots as you want and go from there. So the last thing that we would actually do associated with this project, if we wanted to totally work it from the start, is we would actually come back and we would actually go out and create a shipment for that sales order and invoice the particular sales order. So we'll come back to the sales order associated with the project. You notice when you actually come up in there, all the project numbers are actually in the left list now, so we'll take this particular one. We actually go check our allocations and that stuff because if the pumps have come in, they've been allocated, so we're good to go. But if we actually went and took it, the allocations, you can actually see when we actually do the allocations that everything's good to go. And if we wanted to, we could actually come up here and process a delivery against this particular project. So... Actually, we've got a shortage there because I did something wrong. But now we can actually come up in this particular case. If I was to validate this, what we're actually doing now is we're actually, and then invoice it, we're actually invoicing the project and go from there. So I said since this particular uh, project is all but done as we've taken a look at. So now if we end out of this and we go back to our project and just refresh it for us real quick, so if we actually um, come to our lines and uh, refresh it, now we can actually see everything that carried out associated with the project, that type scenario. And if we also go back to our position and refresh that, you'll actually see, come down here, you'll see the, uh, I thought I shipped it, but apparently I didn't. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. Uh, so here's our delivery, here's our invoice associated with this particular project, and see the colors changing that type of scenario. So now what you can also do here in this particular case, now you can come up and actually change this product from open to close to end it. And there's different things you can do. Once I change that project status, it writes some of the financial transactions. And 
if I mark it to ended, I'm done with this project. I can't do anything more against it, whereas if it's closed, I can make di different types of adjustments, maybe credit memos, things such as that, additional charges, things associated with it, that particular project. But what I can also do, too, if I want to do some analysis, if I actually went up here and ran my project report, we'll just come print this out real quick. And what it actually shows is a very good report showing you all the detail lines of the project and what got paid for, what got executed, that type scenario as we go through the process. Now, once this finishes up, and I'll show you one or two other things, we will actually go back and take a look at some different projects. And we'll take this thing. So here was our report. Here was our budget, our sales amount, our margin, our committed. And here's all the summary down here. So here's your standard report that you can actually use for project analysis within NPM. If I was to actually go out here to my dimension balances and actually bring up a uh, one called project that I've got set up, and actually tell it, okay, if we actually went out in this particular case, here's our project dimension, so we can actually see all the uh, dimension about transactions associated with it, um, that type of scenario, and go from there. You can also use the budget commitments, the pre-commitments, the standard commitment, that type of stuff associated with it. Now, let's go back and take a look at a couple of projects. Now, I said in this particular case, here was a case where you had Basically, you were selling four things associated with this particular project. Well, maybe you don't want to put on the sales or all those four lines of detail. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate this project. We'll create us a new one here real quick, create the analytical dimension, go from there. So now I've got that project, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do a second, another line called deliver. And in this particular case, I'm going to come up here and say, well, I'm delivering a CE 101. It's a custom engineered product. There's one of them. And for this particular custom engineered project, I'm actually going to come out and sell it for $152,000, which means I need to blank out these because that $153,000 covers the cost of this particular project all the labor, all the materials, all the everything. So now in this particular case, if I take this guy and then I save it, and if I come over here to the uh, the lines and uncheck this one, uncheck this one, uncheck this one, uncheck this one, and now save it, uh, we'll actually come back. And now if we actually went and created a quote right now, that standard quote, when we actually created it, only going to have one line on it, a custom engineered project. So that's how you can actually have the details, but actually show the customer the only one line that you're going to build them, that type scenario. So take a look at that. Now, another example that you could also do too is let's come up and let's just take an example of a project where we have progress billing. So now in this particular case, I'm going to make this one bigger. So what I've done is I've got a line in the project that is nothing more than a billing line. So in this particular case, I said that after I completed the two design phases, per the agreement, I could actually do a project billing or a progress billing. In this particular case, I can actually come up and actually – trying to get to the uh, line text here. So you can actually see the line text. I said I could do a 20% progress bill at this particular stage in the progress. So, and the project. So, for example, if we uh, actually went back to the quote that was created for this particular project, you'll only see one thing on the quote. You'll actually see the four progress billing lines associated with it. Now, what you could also do too is you could actually create a project in which you had a bill of material. So, for example, I'm going to cover this one's multi-level planning. So here's all the dot lines. In this case, there's two design lines, a production line for a CE-104. Now, CE-104 has a standard bill of material defined in it. And what I actually did was I actually went and did a multi-level planning and versus doing an MRP, although I could have done it. So now if we go to the production here, what you'll actually see is the bill of material associated with making that. So you can have bills of materials within the uh, project line. I could actually have a project and have four or five projects with each their own unique bill of material for how I would go about putting it together. So you've got a lot of flexibility in how you use the project module manufacturing project man management within, say, GRPX3. It's really your choice how you would like to do it. 
And once again, you have a lot of flexibility associated with it. Now, let's just say, for example, that this particular project, this project number four, was a sub-project of a master project. So in this particular case, I might come up here and say, well, what particular project is it a sub-project of? So I'm going to come up here and say it's a sub-project of this uh, uh, number two here. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to come up and get this next one right here and say that this one is a sub-project of number two and save that. So now if I go to project number two and take a look at my overview, now you can see here's my my uh, master project and here's two sub-projects under it. And if I was to actually take a look at this, it would actually do a cons An employee was an employee 1008, and he worked in design, oops, not design, and fab mechanical. And what project was it? Well, it was the sample project we're working on. It was fabrication mechanical. He did 25 hours, and maybe one of his cohorts, uh, guy number 1009, and this is pulling from the same employee table that um, our shop floor control pulls from. So in this particular case, we'll kick the project again and pick the line associated with it. And this guy worked, uh, I don't know, we'll say he worked 35 hours. Now, if I actually validate this, what is it actually going to do now? It's just going to go back, and it's actually going to report time against that project. So now if I actually go back to my execution side of things, uh, we'll actually come up and take a look at that. We'll come to our lines. We'll refresh them. And what we'll actually see now is all kind of things are taking force. We've been carrying out uh, uh, some things, some committed things, et cetera. But what's the one thing we haven't done? Well, we haven't received our pumps, and we haven't paid for our pumps. So let's just go back real quick and take a look at that purchase order that we created for those two pumps. The supplier 211 is purchase order 185, and the total for that purchase order was $20,500. So what we'll actually do is we'll come back. And we'll actually do a receipt of that associated with it. So we'll actually come create a new receipt. Also, same standard uh, barcoding uh, technology applies to NPMs it does in standard, say, GRPX3. So we'll come select this guy. We'll get our two pumps. We'll create those. Now, obviously, we're getting some match warnings because they came in earlier. And now the next thing that we'll actually do is we'll go back and actually process the invoice for that particular uh, in, uh, purchase order. And if you remember right, that particular purchase order had a value of uh, 20500 So we'll actually come create our purchase order. Now, what's really was taking place now is if we go back to our chart, we're actually transitioning from committed dollars to carried out or executed dollars. And on the purchasing side, that takes place when you actually – process the receipt and process the purchase invoice. So in this particular case, we'll take a full invoice, we'll tell it a new invoice record, and we'll say it's a standard invoice, and we'll say the supplier is S2311, and we'll go over to our re receipt, and we'll pick that receipt that we just did, receiver 186. So it actually brought that particular information in. We'll go back in, we'll put in our uh, document number, and we'll actually come down and say, well, it was $20,500, and we'll uh, create that. And, of course, it says, that's in this particular case, we got some match warnings, but really it's because it's too earlier. So now what we'll actually do is we'll actually go out and we'll post some activity against that particular thing. So what happens is now we've actually totally carried out the receipt of those purchase goods. If we come back to our project and go into the execution size, what we'll actually see when we take a look at it, when we do this, we'll notice now that now we've actually gone from a budget of 24900 a committed of 20500 and a carried out of 24460 So in this particular case, we're actually looking at line number one, 2400 But if we go down to this one, we'll actually see that uh, there were $7,000 that were carried out for the, the small pumps, 
and then there was uh, 13,500 carried out for those. And if we go back to our position and refresh that, we'll just see more information about this. Notice when we come down in here that, you know, our lights have changed because now we've got things received against the project. But you'll also notice down up here in this particular case that uh, where you've actually got some percentages showing you some overrun, some underrides, et cetera. So in this particular case, if you actually take a look at the design phase, we actually had um, a budget of $2,400. We're actually at 90% of that budget. If we drill down to the actual PO lines, you can actually see the one coming from Poe Manufacturing. We were 120% of our budget, and others go from there. So let's just go up here and take ourselves another snapshot and see how we're doing. So now we've got that snapshot. So now if we actually come back, and you can take these snapshots at any point in the process. So now if we have this particular snapshot and take a look at the snapshot view, this actually shows us the history of the project, and you can actually see the dollars being transferred from budget to committed to carry it out. So now that second snapshot, we still we had some stuff committed, but we had very little carried out. And in this particular case, we've actually gone from budget to committed and that stuff. And of course, you can obviously come up here and make it a, a line graph and make it much easier to read. So you can actually see the transition from budget to committed to carried out as part of the project. So you can take as many of these snapshots as you want and go from there. So the last thing that we would actually do associated with this project, if we wanted to totally work it from the start, is we would actually come back and we would actually go out and create a shipment for that sales order and invoice the particular sales order. So we'll come back to the sales order associated with the project. You notice when you actually come up in there, all the project numbers are actually in the left list now. So we'll take this particular one. We actually go check our allocations and that stuff because if the pumps have come in, they've been allocated, so we're good to go. But if we actually went and took it, the allocations, you can actually see when we actually do the allocations that everything's good to go. And if we wanted to, we could actually come up here and process a delivery against this particular project. So, actually, we got a shortage there because I did something wrong. But now we can actually come up in this particular case. If I was to validate this, what we're actually doing now is we're actually, and then invoice it, we're actually invoicing the project and go from there. So, I said since this particular uh, project is all but done, as we've taken a look at. So now if we end out of this and we go back to our project and just refresh it for us real quick. So if we actually um, come to our lines and uh, refresh it, now we can actually see everything that carried out associated with the project, that type scenario. And if we also go back to our position and refresh that, you'll actually see, come down and you'll see the uh, I thought I shipped it, but apparently I didn't. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. Uh, so here's our delivery. Here's our invoice associated with this particular project. You can see the colors changing that type scenario. So now what you can also do here in this particular case, now you can come up and actually change this product from open to close to ended. And there's different things you can do. Once I change that project status, it writes some of the financial transactions. And... If I mark it to end it, I'm done with this project. I can't do anything more against it, whereas if it's closed, I can make di different types of adjustments, maybe credit memos, things such as that, additional charges, things associated with it, that particular project. But what I can also do, too, if I want to do some analysis, if I actually went up here and ran my project report, we'll just come print this out real quick. And what it actually shows is a very good report showing you all the detail lines of the project and what got paid for, what got executed, that type scenario as we go through the process. Now, once this finishes up, and I'll show you one or two other things, we'll actually go back and take a look at some different projects. And we'll take this thing. So here was our report. Here was our budget, our sales amount, our margin, our committed. And here's all the summary down here. So here's your standard report that you can actually use for project analysis within NPM. If I was to actually go out here to my dimension balances and actually bring up a uh, one called project that I've got set up, and actually tell it, okay, if we actually went out in this particular case, here's our project dimension, so we can actually see all the uh, dimension about transactions associated with it, um, that type scenario, and go from there. You can also use the budget commitments, the pre-commitments, the standard commitment, that type stuff associated with it. 
Now, let's go back and take a look at a couple of projects. Now, I said in this particular case, here was a case where you had basically you were selling four things associated with this particular project. Well, maybe you don't want to put on the sales or all those four lines of detail. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate this project. We'll create us a new one here real quick. Create the analytical dimension. Go from there. So now I've got that project. But I'm going to do something different. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do a second, another line called deliver. And in this particular case, I'm going to come up here and say, well, I'm delivering a CE 101. It's a custom engineered product. There's one of them. And for this particular custom engineered project, I'm actually going to come out and sell it for $152,000, which means I need to blank out these because that $153,000 covers the cost of this particular project, all the labor, all the materials, all the everything. So now in this particular case, if I take this guy and then I save it, and if I come over here to the, uh, the lines and uncheck this one, uncheck this one, uncheck this one, uncheck this one, and now save it. Uh, we'll actually come back, and now if we actually went and created a quote right now, that standard quote, when we actually created it, it's only going to have one line on it, a custom engineered project. So that's how you can actually have the details, but actually show the customer the only one line that you're going to build them, that type scenario. So take a look at that. Now another example that you could also do too is let's come up and let's just take an example of a project where we have progress billing. So now in this particular case, I'm going to make this one bigger. So what I've done is I've got a line in the project that is nothing more than a billing line. So in this particular case, I said that after I completed the two design phases, per the agreement, I could actually do a project billing or a progress billing. In this particular case, I can actually come up and actually trying to get to the uh, line text here. So you can actually see the line text. I said I could do a 20% progress bill at this particular stage in the progress and the project. So for example, if we uh, actually went back to the quote that was created for this particular project, you'll only see one thing on the quote. You'll actually see the four progress billing lines associated with it. Now what you could also do too is you could actually create a project in which you had a bill of material. So for example, I'm going to cover this one's multi-level planning. So here's all the dot lines. In this case, there's two design lines, a production line for a CE-104. Now CE-104 has a standard bill of material defined in it. And what I actually did was I actually went and did a multi-level planning and versus doing an MRP, although I could have done it. So now if we go to the production here, what you'll actually see is the bill of material associated with making that. So you can have bills of materials within the uh, project line. I could actually have a project and have four or five projects with each their own unique bill of material for how. And once again, you have a lot of flexibility associated with it. Now let's just say, for example, that this particular project, this project number four, was a sub-project of a master project. So in this particular case, I might come up here and say, well, what particular project is it a sub-project of? So I'm going to come up here and say it's a sub-project of this uh, uh, number two here. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to come up and get this next one right here and say that this one is a sub-project of number two and save that. So now if I go to project number two and take a look at my overview, now you can see here's my my... Uh, master project, and here's two sub-projects under it. And if I was actually to take a look at this, it would actually do a consolidated view of all the projects. So this is where you might create a master project and sub-projects for the major tasks. It really depends what you would like to do with it. So that's sort of a quick look through uh, manufacturing project management. Let's just go back real quick, uh, excuse me, and go take a look at some Bear with me, I got my go back to our PowerPoint. So well what can you do with it? Well basically if you take a look at the major benefits associated with manufacturing project management, it really centers around key uh three key areas. It gives you the ability to mount monitor and manage 
progress of a project, budgets, commitments, expenses, invoices, control the cost, because have your initial cost, your committed cost, your actual cost, your variances, and identify and anticipate drifts, uh, drifts such as activities, taking too long, that type scenario. So let's just say, for example, that I went, I didn't spend a whole lot of time putting dates on the task, but had I put dates on the task and I wouldn't change one task date, then it would actually have come back and updated the major project end date and gone from there. So you've got all kinds of things that you can do with it. So 